you know, a lot of times people will ask me about my colon cancer and they'll say, you know, what were your symptoms? What were you experiencing that led you to go and talk to a doctor? And so, um, so I just want to share with you a little bit about what happened with me. And, and so just kind of put some th things in context. So, um, I had had, um, <laughs> by the way, it, I'm just going to say one really quick little caveat. There is a funny reality that when you're going through colon cancer and you talk about things like your rectum and your poop and just all these things about our butts that we normally don't talk about like ever, right? Like people don't talk about their bowel movements outside of their household, right? Like just, we just don't do it. And I was one of those type of people who, um, I didn't want to poop in public. Like I was too embarrassed to do that. I would go and um, I would find like a gas station that had one of those bathrooms, which is like the individual stall, you know, with the, with the door that locks to go outside. So it was just me alone in the bathroom if I ever needed to go poop in public. Like that's what I would do. I would literally drive places or I would be in utter pain until I got home to go to the bathroom. And so I have totally have had to change all of that opinion and experience because when you have colon cancer, things change inside your, inside your, your bowels and your, your bowel movements and all these kinds of things. And so anyhow, I wanted to just put that out there in the beginning because, um, what I'm about to say is not something that's necessarily, um, um, it's not super embarrassing, but for other people it might be like, Ooh, like just talking about that, you know, but it's just, here I am. This is, I'm wanting to share this stuff about colon cancer because I want to be real with people about my experience and, um, and that might give some answers to some people, but also might help people to see, okay, there's things that I need to do for myself so they can take care of my health. So, um, a few years ago I had had problem, um, with hemorrhoids and people are like, oh, she's going to talk about hemorrhoids. I know like hemorrhoids, like super embarrassing. Right. And so they were painful enough that there was one point I was literally traveling home from speaking at a conference and I could barely hold still in my seat in the plane. And I remember like holding on to the arms of the, of the seat in the plane and just kind of switching back and forth and trying to find a comfortable spot to sit. Cause they don't want you walking around and standing for a long time when you're on the plane and just so <laughs> comfortable. And I'm like, okay, this is it. Like I have got to go see a doctor, like no more putting up with this pain. What am I doing? Right? Like this is, this is horrible that I'm putting myself through this. <laughs> So I'd gone to the doctor, which was super uncomfortable in the first place to go. But I'm like, you know what? The colorectal doctors, which stands for colon rectum, colorectal doctors, this is what they do. They know about butt stuff. Like I'm not going to, um, excuse me. One of the things about chemo is you have a constant nasal drip and it's still kind of lingering a little bit. Anyhow, so I had gone to the doctor in the first place and I'm like, this is super embarrassing. He's going to look at my butt, you know, all these, I was just like, oh my gosh, okay, this is horrible, but whatever. I needed help. It was, it was too painful to not get the help. And isn't it funny how we put things off that are so painful that, and that we could still get, we could have gotten help sooner. Right. And so, um, so anyhow, I had had problems with, with hemorrhoids and fast forward a year later. So things have gotten better. There's like a special ointment that he gave me and it helped. I didn't have to do surgery for them, but I got an ointment and it helped. A year later, I was having some problems again. So there I was in the car driving on my way to go see the doctor. And the spirit just whispered to my soul, you need to tell the doctor about the blood that you've been having in your stool. So for context around that, I had been having blood in my stool for years off and on. And I just thought it was kind of just like a thing. Like we just, it just happens. And when you have hemorrhoids, you think, well, you know, is it blood because of the hemorrhoids, like whatever. And so I just, I remember driving down the car and driving down the road, excuse me, holding onto my steering wheel of the car, talking and talking out loud to God, like, I'm not going to talk to him about the fact I have blood in my stool. I'm not going to do this. It's like, what's the big deal? Like everybody has this from time to time. And again, just the whisperings in my heart, you need to tell the doctor that you've had blood in your stool. And so I was like, okay, you know, and I'm a woman of faith and I'm like, okay, all right, all right. I'm already going to the doctor. Okay. But I really wasn't, really wasn't excited to tell him this piece of the puzzle. So I'm there at the doctor. We have a follow-up visit. And then 
Um, and then it was just like as if like somebody opened my mouth and spit it out because I was I was being a little bit reluctant, even though the spirit had witnessed to me that I needed to say this. I was still being reluctant. And so just like spit out. It's like, by the way, um, I've had, I want to tell you about something. I've been having some blood in my stool. And my surgeon, the doctor stopped and looked at me and he said, blood in your stool? Why? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not sure what's happening. He's like, well, how long has it been going on for? And I told him been off and on for at least the last 10 years that I could remember. And I remember him looking at me and his like eyebrows go up like, okay. And he said, well, let's, let's talk about some of the things. He's like, you're 45 years old. You eat primarily vegan vegetarian. You're exercising on a regular basis. You're not obese. And then he's like, is there any history of cancer, specifically colon cancer in your family? I said, no, there's no history of cancer in our family. Um, we tend to have more like strokes and heart attacks. That's kind of been our, our bag. And he's like, Jen, there's no reason why you should be having blood in your stool with any kind of regularity. So he said, I'm going to order a colonoscopy for you. Let's get inside there and let's see what's going on. So here I was, I was already embarrassed enough to talk to my doctor about hemorrhoids. And I'm like, oh, a colonoscopy. And people get all sorts of freaked out about colonoscopies because they're like, oh my gosh, somebody's going to go in through my butthole and they're going to be in there doing all this stuff. And this is embarrassing. And it's, and that's all the stuff that I was thinking about when he told me this. But the look on his face, and it was almost as if his spirit was speaking my spirit, saying, you need to do this colonoscopy, Jen. And I immediately knew that it was the very best right thing to do. And he said, it's going to take a while. It's going to take probably up to two, three months before we get you in for colonoscopy because of the clinic and the hospital that I, this, the, where my insurance is at and everything. They, they've got a lot of people who are getting colonoscopy. So it's kind of hard to get on the schedule. And so he said, you know, I don't think this is life threatening right now, but I want to make sure that we get in there. So just kind of be patient and, you know, get you on the list and they'll call you as soon as they can get you in. Well, two weeks later, I got a call from the scheduler that said, okay, we can get you in on September 9th. And then I don't know about you, but like for me, whenever I'm talking to somebody in scheduling, I'm like, okay, well, what are my other options? Right? I just want to know some of my options so I can kind of best pick and choose what works best with my week, etc. cetera. And, um, and she said, well, the next one's not until November. So here it was like right at the end of August, I had an appointment opportunity September 9th, or I could wait a couple of months till November. <laughs> Immediately I knew, okay, take the September 9th one. So, um, so I did. And when you prep for colonoscopy, you have all this stuff that you drink and, you know, all these, all of these, um, stuff to clear out your colon because they need to be able to see what's going on in there. And so it's one of those things like you're going to want to stay home for the day. And because you need to be close to the toilet and um, just lots of stuff that you're drinking, you know, and you could, and you can, it's just this stuff that like just kind of purges your system out. And it got to a point where it wasn't like, like, yes, it was kind of like diarrhea poop that was coming out, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was almost just like fluid, just like watery, you know, and it got to a point where it was just basically like a really light yellowish color, almost like pee would be basically, but it's, but it's coming out of your bowels. And that's good because they need to be cleared out so that when they stick the tube up through your anus and they go up through your colon, that they need to be able to see what's going on. And so if there's a bunch of residual stuff that's inside there, it's really hard for them to see. So that's why they need to have it cleared out. So when I went to see the doctor, um, um, or for the colonoscopy, excuse me, that's when they found the mass. And... Um, the doctor could only go 22 centimeters into my colon before he encountered a mass that was so large that he didn't want to try to push the tube past this mass and, and fear that he might puncture it, cut it, something like that. So he had to stop. And then, and then I was brought out of anesthesia and that's when, then that's when my husband and I found out about the, about the mass inside my colon. And the doctor said, I'm pretty sure it's cancer. He's like, I've seen this enough times. I don't feel like I even need to have a biopsy come back. He's like, I'm pretty sure it's cancer. 
And then that's when the tears came and some, you know, obviously all of a sudden here's this big shift in my life. And so I wanted to share this part of my story with you because when you are feeling prompted by the spirit to talk to your doctor about something, do it, my friends, just do it. Because God is aware of you. He wants you to come close to him. And I think sometimes these major medical maladies that happen in our lives are an opportunity for us to come closer to the Lord. And um, while, yes, it was embarrassing to even talk to my doctor about hemorrhoids in the first place, to deal with all of that stuff, and then to tell him about the blood in my stool, and then to do the colonoscopy, and then subsequent all these other things too. <clears throat> I'm so grateful that I did it early because usually... We don't get colonoscopies until we're 50 years old. That's usually when the insurance companies say that it's okay. Here I was five years earlier than that. I was at 45 years old. And my doctor's saying, there's no reason why you should have blood in your stool, Jen. You are a healthy person and you're living a healthy lifestyle. So that colonoscopy helped to identify the mass. It also helped to identify a couple of other polyps. And so they do a polypectomy where they remove those. And I will, and I will need to get more colonoscopies in the future as well, and and that's okay. Now I now now I've I've had five colonoscopies. So I'm like whatever. It's like I get it. You know, it's whatever the, the big deal. It's not a big deal anymore to me. But whatever you're going through, if medically, it, again, if what I want to impress upon you is if you are feeling prompted by the spirit, follow through on that. Talk to your doctor. Do what you need to do to get the answers for yourself. Um, and I just think about how if I hadn't followed through on that, if I just continued to put up with it, I wasn't hurting you guys. Like I didn't have like major pain or anything like that. In fact, chemo was way worse than anything I went through with anything before the surgery, during the surgery, recovery from surgery. Chemo was horrible compared to it. Which is kind of crazy, right? Because I put the chemo in to kill whatever cancer might still be sitting in my body. And so, um, but one thing that I discovered from my doctor, he said, you know, if you don't deal with colon cancer, it's, it can spread, it can metastasize, and it typically spreads to your liver and to your lungs. And so I just think about, golly, if I had not gotten this identified and dealt with, could it have, when I did five years later go for my colonoscopy, the normal standard colonoscopy at 50, if I had done it then, you know, could it have spread to other places? And there's always a coulda, woulda, shoulda, whatever, you know, those kinds of things. You, you, your mind can kind of spin out of control a little bit. But I am so grateful that I followed through and um, brought it up to my doctor so then we could deal with it and come up with a solution to identify what's going on and, and to move forward. So anyhow, I wanted to share that with you. Thanks for letting me be really raw and vulnerable about things like poop and hemorrhoids. And I know this sounds horrible, but you know what? It's a thing. Like we all have this part of our body that, that stuff is going on. And so, um, so I kind of have to like get over myself a little bit <laughs> and trust me, cancer helps you to get over yourself a little bit. I'll tell you that. All right, my friends. So follow through on what you're being prompted to do. And, uh, and it just, just might save your life or just might help you to get some answers that you need to have so that you can have quality of life that will be better for you. All right, I'll see you in the next time. Thanks so much and God bless.